Welcome back to the Tower Tech. Today we're taking a look at radiators. How much space can be too much space? I'm very lucky I've got the Case Labs SMA A8 and I've got a 560 mil, that's four 140 mil fan lengths in the bottom that's calling two GPUs and I've got one 1 480, that's four 120 mil fan lengths in the top that's calling the CPU. And if you follow my channel, you'll know that I've recently built a Ryzen build to complement my Threadripper build. And I've got significantly smaller amounts of radiator space in that build. In fact, I've got very thin radiators. They're 30 mil thick. And I've got one 240 mil and one 360 mil radiator all in one loop, unlike the two loops that I've got in the Case Labs case. And I was a little bit surprised to find that the temperatures, broadly speaking, were on a par, if not slightly higher than I was getting in my case labs case. So that got me thinking, at what point do you get to the point of diminishing returns? At what point is adding more radiator space absolutely no use? I had a spare 280 mil radiator. So I thought, why not add that to my GPU loop? And let's see what that does. Preliminary results baseline before adding in the uh, the new radiator is that pretty much no matter what I did with the GPUs, they were sitting broadly at about 51 and 53 degrees respectively. That's the two GPUs. You typically find one gets a little bit warmer because you've got a bit of an extra overhead in supporting the SLI configuration. And I found that at stock speeds, overclock speeds of any iteration and actually even when I pump more voltage in into it it started to spike up to sort of 54 55 but pretty well within the margin of error not a lot of difference so let's get the extra rad in there and let's see if that makes any difference to our temps <laughs>
So the results are in. And you can probably see from my video that actually the first thing that I did was remove all of the dust that had built up in the other radiator over the course of the 12 months or so that that's actually been inside my build. That made actually quite a marked difference. That dropped the temperature on both GPUs by two degrees respectively. So 50 to 48 and 53 to 51. And then actually with that cleaned radiator, I did a whole load of testing of different overclocks, overclocked it to 2012 megahertz broadly still was getting 49 48 to 52 51 uh, degrees on the two gpus overclocked to 2038 megahertz and again still getting 49 52 and a whole load of iterations that took us all the way up to 2076 megahertz that was with a 100 percent slider on, all the way to the right on msi uh, afterburner that very oddly gave us 47.49. So the temperatures actually went down uh, with more voltage going through the GPUs, which again just illustrates that we're working well within the margins of errors. I also did some testing in Player Unknown's Battlegrounds to try and give more realistic workloads to the GPUs and see what that actually did to them. Uh, again, peaking anywhere around the 50, 51 degrees on the hottest GPU and around 48 to 49 degrees C on the cooler GPU. Repeated all of these tests after I'd added in the additional 280 mil radiator. Now what's quite interesting is I definitely found it took a lot longer for the temperature to creep up and stabilize. We're talking about 50% more surface area in the radiator space. So you know, that extra cooling volume and capacity definitely kept the GPUs cooler. And when once they did get up to temperature, I saw them stabilize initially around the kind of 43, 44, 45 degree mark. So that was typically giving us anywhere between an eight to a 10 degree uh, cooler temperatures on both GPUs, which is absolutely remarkable. I did then over the course of about an hour's worth of testing see that start to incrementally creep up but to be fair I had both of my soft boxes on and they throw out quite a bit of heat. That saw temperatures start to creep up to around the 47-48 degrees on the hottest GPU and typically always saw the cooler of the GPUs at around about two degrees cooler. So it's fair to say that that 50% extra radiator space, exactly the same thickness of radiator, an extra 280 mils of cooling capacity has given us anywhere in the region of about six to eight degrees of extra cooling capacity. And I have to say, guys, I'm surprised by that. I was expecting to conclude this video on a, it's not made a blind bit of difference at all. Uh, I'm pleasantly surprised to be wrong so we've certainly not hit the uh, the point of diminishing returns for certainly the Pascal architecture on the 1080s. Um, I'm just kind of left with with one thought, if I'm honest with you. And I'm going to close this video with a bit of a plea out to Nvidia. Please bring back support for three-way SLI. I really want to see what that can do. There we go, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're really well wherever in the world you are. Please like and share this video. Subscribe if you're not so you don't miss out on all the great content to come. And I'll see you in my next one.